Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Curio Black 1962. This is a two to six player game for ages 13 and up, and it takes roughly 15 minutes per player. And in the game, you are playing as an undercover operative attempting to head into the Mariana, an island next to the South Pacific. There you're going to find an undercover gambling ring where you'll be attempting to gather curios, interesting, useful items throughout the Cold War that will benefit your country. Little do you know that the U.S. plans to bomb the island in an eventual state of time, and you'll need to get in, gather as many curios as possible, and get out before the island explodes. Can you escape and gather the most valuable items by the time the game ends? Find out in Curio Black. To set up the game Curio Black, the first thing you will do is you will take all the main pieces of the game board. Based on the number of players, you're going to be adding in these tiles here. If you're playing with four or more, you'll have these two. Otherwise, you're just going to include these ones here. Place them down horizontally across the game board with the M marker on the very far left hand side. After you've done that, you'll take the 5 and 10 markers and put them on the very far right hand side. These are going to be valuable commodities at the end when players choose to leave. Then take the auction card deck and shuffle it up and place it somewhere within reach, as well as the intrigue deck and the top secret deck. Take all of the money, the 50s, the 10s, and the 5 millions and put them in a pool somewhere within reach. Each player is going to get a top secret assignment card. These are going to be basically the type of curios that they are specifically going to want. They might want a health or a tech or deals, and you're going to make sure that these are hidden for the remainder of the game up until the very end. Additionally, what players are going to get is one of their faction cards. It'll have a number on it and it will be either allied or they will be communists. This is just going to detail that you're going to be getting three of these intrigue cards to start the game off with, and you're going to be getting $50 million as well. Don't forget you're also going to be getting a player reference card. This will be useful to you in explaining the different actions you can take. So once you've got your money, your intel cards, your character, your secret assignment, and of course your player reference, you're pretty much ready to go. So in the game, rounds take place as turns. And what happens first is you'll choose a starting player. And we'll go ahead and select this person over here. And to begin, you'll take the marker and you'll move it one space to the right. After you've done that, then you'll begin the auction. The auction's very simple. This deck that has been shuffled, you'll take one card and reveal it. That person, who is the starting player, will begin to place the bid. The bid is a minimum of the top right. So in this case here, a seaplane airship is 20 million. So they must have 20 million in order for the bid to begin. They can then bid 20 million, the next player can bid 25, and 30, and 35, etc, etc, until eventually one person wins the bid. And if they don't have the money, then you're going to skip this phase and this card will not count. The player who wins this is going to be getting it, spending the money and putting it back into the pool, and they're going to be getting possibly a unique ability that they can play, but mainly victory points. If you have the secret, uh, top secret agenda of this specific type, which in this case is tech, and it even tells you on the back of the card, you're going to be getting 15 points at the end of the game. However, if you do not have tech, you're going to be getting 11 points at the end of the game for this specific curio. After the auction phase is over, then it's going to be the action phase. And it's just for the player whose turn it is. So that player gets to take three actions currently, and that will change as the game moves on. In the action phase, of the three actions you can take, you can either draw an intrigue card, play an intrigue card, discard an intrigue card for $5 million, and then we move on to auction cards. You can either discard an auction card for its base price, which is whatever the starting bid is. You can play one and turn it face up, because whenever they come to you, they go face down. And if it has an action on it, you can do that action. So some of these guys here will have specific actions and victory points. And when you play the card, you get to keep it for its victory points for the end of the game. You can also make a trade with another player. Or you could bet on a secret assignment. So for instance, players have these secret assignments. If you think you know what their secret assignment is, you can go ahead and say, I bet you, 2 million or 20 million that your top secret assignment is tech. And if you're right, they will have to pay you out. 
This is done in whispers though, so that nobody else on the table can hear. And the person who pays is the player who got guessed correctly. So make sure you keep your top secret assignment as top secret as possible. And the final thing you can do, but the most important thing, is exiting the market. You can exit the market at any point in the game board. However, once you exit, you're out of the game. But whatever you have is kept for you and is safe, and you can use that as victory points. And in fact, you might be the only play person remaining at the end of the game. And the reason why you do that is because when this marker hits the very end, the Mariana is destroyed and all remaining players are also removed as well. Once the player has done the auction, taken up to three actions, they're going to then pass. And the next player is going to get a chance to go by moving this marker forward. Now, there's a number of ways that the marker can move forward as well. One main one is in this deck of intrigue cards, you're going to find these black bordered cards here with a little symbol in the top right hand side. Whenever one of these is played, this marker will also move forward along the game board which is why you're never gonna be sure if you're going to be able to get out in time. So you have to always be careful about how many turns you think you might have. And of course, when the marker moves forward for the second time, it will be the next player's turn. And this player is not going to get a turn with actions for quite some time. So they have to be careful and they have to be wary knowing that that marker could hit that space. And the game will just progress like that. Auction, actions, pass auction actions pass and it will keep going until you hit certain spaces on this main game board some of them will allow players to vote for who gets a free auction card others will allow players to gain more money players will eventually run out of actions going from three to two to one and players will eventually be able to draw intrigue cards up until this marker gets really close, in which case players might eventually just decide to leave in order to keep all of the auction cards they have and not get exploded in. <laughs> when all players exit the game or this marker hits this space, the game will end. Any player who got out first will get an additional 10 million points, and any player who gets out second will get 5 million points. The player who is able to gain the most merits, which are the basic victory points in the game, will be the winner. But if you died, then you'll be the next person. And that's basically how the game is played. Curio Black is an auction-based game, an action management-based game, and a timing game. You're basically trying to time your actions, gather as much as you can from the auction, and escape before it's too late. As players leave the game, it provides with a sense of intrigue and danger. You might not be sure if you're going to get another turn by the time the bomb comes. And of course, with more players comes more interesting gameplay. It, it makes it more of a struggle to determine if you can make it alive. And of course, you can have your other players decide to keep their turns and not leave to try and pr progress the game board so that it's more likely that you fail. In fact, they have uh, certain cards in here where players can play them, like I will recall this auction, in which case the game board pushes the marker. And so you have to be very wary that players might be saving cards like that to your detriment. <laughs> and so you might have to leave a turn or two early just to guarantee that you get to keep what auctions that you do have. Now, when playing the two player variant of the game, you'll be removing two of these game boards here and it becomes a slightly smaller game. And uh, the areas in which you're going to normally be voting on a person to get something turn into a coin flip in which you can use this coin here. There's the M and an O and you'll be like, I am the M and you're the O and you flip and bam, and that will decide who gets whatever it is based on the vote here. Uh, the two player game is fine. Uh, my only issue is of course the flipping of the coin. It never feels good to leave things to chance. I love the idea of allowing players to vote for it, which is why in a three and a four and a five player game, it starts getting more interesting as to the different types of choices that you can make and who you want to give certain pieces to, like, oh, it's just a five, I'm gonna give, or it's, it's only one and they don't have any yet, so they can just have one. Or, oh, well, we don't, don't wanna vote on this guy because he's got four pieces already and he still managed to keep all of his money. 
And so there is that little social dilemma. And of course, there's another little trick to the game too, which is really, really cool. Um, speaking on the stuff I really do like about the game, is you are able to, if you want, uh, try and keep people in the game by, oh, on your turn you can do this and that, and oh, I don't really need this, or I'll play this card for you. But you have traps set forth in your hand. Some of them will just give you additional money, others are gonna let you steal curios from other players, and some will let you redraw or replay a specific auction. Some cards are going to move the board forward and some of them won't. And then there's the risk. Uh, do you want to continue playing? Knowing that this board is here and there's still four more players who's going to take their turn, do you want to take any actions and try and gather more curios? Or is it time to leave? Because by that time, you might not actually have a turn and you might have to you might have to leave the game, you might get exploded. And so there is this like push your luck element to the game. So it's like an auction and push your luck kind of management system that all works really, really well. More players equals more fun, involves trading, involving the different types of curios you can use and curios that you can gain for value, being able to vote on people's secret cards. Oh, you've gathered way too many red cards. I bet that your deals. Or, oh, you have a bunch of blue. I bet that your tech. And then, oh, wait, you're not. You're actually red and you've just been tricking us the whole time. So it can be kind of deceiving and treacherous <laughs> throughout the game. I really like this game. I think the quality and the components are excellent. The game plays really smooth and really simple. And even though there's quite a few actions, they're all very simple to do. Drawing a card, playing a card, discarding a card for money, because you'll need money in this game, and sometimes you'll be dead broke. Auction cards, being able to discard one for the auction, or being able to discard one in order to gain the value back. Uh, players making trades with each other is pretty simple and of course checking on their secret assignment is kind of a dubious uh, like double-edged sword and then the very simple one just leaving the market there's a lot of actions but they're all very easy you know what you're going to do on your turn for the most part nobody's turn takes a long time i would even say that 15 minutes per player might even be shorter than that actually i haven't played the six player variation variation of the game i played two players for the live stream and then i played three and four players and at four players was my my favorite that was like the best uh, i felt like even more players makes this game even better uh so yes quality even the stylization stylization of the game it's a 1960s type of a feel all the different colors but they're all kind of like beigey and cool and like dark and noir a little bit yeah, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, you can tell this game had a lot of time put into it to make it sure that it has the same feel, has specific little pieces of like flavor text on the bottom of these guys here, um, and the different types of equipment that you'd be seeing in the 1960s during the Cold War is, is really reminiscent. There's cures to measles and like smallpox and all that kind of stuff, which would help out specific countries who might not have it. And so gathering their agents and bringing them to this destined location, um, you know, trying to gather these pieces pieces of intel is going to be very vital for the specific uh, region. But yeah, anyway, I'm pretty much going on with it. But you understand uh, what the type of game is, if this is going to be a game for you. All the positive I've listed already, and the main thing is just the idea of pushing your luck in action management and being able to kind of see how far you want to go before it's too late. Uh, and what I don't like about it is just a little thing. It's just in the two-player variation, the flipping of a coin. It could go in the winner's favor or the loser's favor. It's, I mean, I don't know how you'd fix it, though, so I don't really think it's a bad thing either. But just you know, this is something that I'm like, oh, I wish there was a different mechanic for this. But even still, I enjoyed the playing the two-player game, and I could see how much more enjoyable it would be with more players. And because of that, Curio Black is getting my seal of approval. I really enjoyed this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Curio Black 1962. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up on Kickstarter right now. You can also go to the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe if you think we've earned your subscription. If you watched more than one of our videos here today, maybe it's time to go ahead and push the button. We do greatly appreciate it. It helps us continue to make more content. Our live streams are every Wednesday on Whatnot, and on Sunday, it's on Twitch, YouTube, YouTube and Facebook, 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to avoiding nuclear destruction with you next time.